Go ahead and call us in order. First item is roll call. Alderman Bannon. Here. Alderman Coleman. Here. Alderman Headley. Here. Alderman Stratton. Here. Alderman Totten. Here. Alderman West. Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Uh, next item is the invocation led by Daryl Jones of Crossroads Church, followed by a pledge of allegiance from Alderman Headley. Next item is the approval of the agenda. I have one change recommended, Mr. Mayor. That is for executive session for legal actions or calls for litigation after item seven, citizen participation before number eight, since agenda. Okay. Uh, that's the only change then? Yes, sir. Right. Uh, I will entertain a motion then to amend the agenda to add an executive session uh, after citizen's participation. So moved. Motion is long and heavy. Second, all the Bannon. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in favor please say aye. Aye. All for the same sign. All right, agenda is amended. Uh, seeing no proclamations, move on to citizens' participation then. Uh, we ask the citizens come uh, forward to the microphone and podium. Just give your uh, name and address for the record. Do you have anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? My name is Daryl Jones, uh, 900 Northwest Jefferson Street. I'm here on behalf of the Grand Valley Partnership uh, and uh, requesting that we be allowed uh, to use city property to serve alcohol uh, during the beer garden on behalf of the partnership. I believe a couple months ago you already approved uh, the liquor license for that, but we need to secure permission uh, to use city property for that. Okay. Okay. Anyone have any questions regarding that? I will entertain a motion then to approve that. Motion mm -hmm. Alderman uh, West, second Alderman Bannon. Any discussion then? All right. And they do, they know they have all the liquor licenses and everything intact, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so no discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All for the same sign. All right. Anyone else wish to address the board? Can I address the board regarding the change of zoning? Yes, yeah, you can. All right. <coughs> My name is Leonard May. I have one of those south floors facilities and had owned that since 2011. <coughs> um, I, if this is approved, I think we're duplicating the mistake that was made for this industry in Green Valley in 2006. 2006, they had two storage facilities. They were not full. We had two storage facilities. The city approved two additional facilities. Therefore, the individual that had my facility that I bought was losing $8,000 a month and had to sell it, and the bank had to take it back and sell it because he was only 36% occupancy. In order to buy it, I approached 27 banks because buying it with 50% down with the low, low income that it had, 
banks weren't interested, and I had to put 50% down. <coughs> and that was, you know, when you go from <coughs> when you go from 600 units to 1,000 units, and you don't have an increase in tenants because tenants don't tenancy does not increase simply because more units available. Uh, right now, average occupancy for the facilities in Grand Valley is at 90%. Another way of saying that is no one's full. So if you allow another 140 units, rather than about 120 units that are already vacant, we'll have about 260 vacant units, which means the income for 90% occupancy goes down to about 80 or 76%. Therefore, all existing facilities will have a hard time paying their bills, their real estate taxes. My uh, real estate taxes every year is 71000 uh, Mortgages, it will be a strain on the existing businesses. Not only is this one being asked to change zoning from residential, there's another one that's about ready to be asked also with one in another facility that's wanting to add on to theirs. So we could go down to an occupancy, if you approve both, of about 68% occupancy, and businesses will be sold, and we will have vacant facilities somewhere. I, believe me, um, it took me years to get up to the 90% occupancy. The new facility, Fair Garage, it took them years those are the two facilities, lock and go, spare garage. It took us years to get to 90% occupancy. And if suddenly we have another 140 for this one, now everybody's at 80% or less. The person who's asking to, I don't know if they've done their math. Because if, you, if they're figuring on a 90% occupancy, it won't be there. Uh, and so, as they say, in 2006, bankruptcy happened. Property that was hard to buy because they weren't, didn't have a dime for mortgage, just none. So I would recommend that uh, when occupancy, as a future recommendation, when occupancy is actually full at the facilities, then at that time, there's a need for additional units. At this time, there's not a, a need because we've got about a 140 units that are empty, and I'd like to rent them. But uh, there's, it would cause a strain to be on each of the three existing facilities in town. Any questions? Questions? Thank you. Okay, uh, another thing, you're, you're zoning for... Uh, Legitimate storage for self-storage is an industrial grade uh, status. I know that I was industrial and I still had to get a, a change in zoning from industrial to allow for self-storage. If you're changing from residential to something that truly is zoned as industrial grade, that's a significant change, and I'm not sure the neighbors have thought about what's going on there. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the board? Seeing none, move on to the executive session we added. I will entertain a motion to adjourn an executive session. So moved. Motion Coleman. Second. 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 Second on the Any discussion? Seeing none, all say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Alderman Stratton. Alderman Totten? Yes. Alderman Coleman? Yes. Alderman Hudson? Yes. Alderman Alderman Bayman? Yes. All right, we'll join the executive session. Back to order. Next item is the consent agenda. I move that we accept the consent agenda. I vote West to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Mayor, members of the board. I'm uh, oh, sorry, I thought you were going to skip me. Any discussion on the consent agenda? 
Mr. Mayor, members of the board, there are uh, corrections to the minutes um, to reflect. Teresa, will you ref refresh my recollection? Yeah, there's just two spots that I need to um, edit to reflect that Mr. Gary was our attorney last week. We indicated Mr. Cook was here on two different spots. Huh? Okay. I'll entertain a motion then to make that amendment to the consent agenda. Moved. Okay. Mr. Heavy, second. Um, Coleman. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment to the consent agenda? Not the consent agenda, just the amendment. No. Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 All for the same sign. Okay, now we're back on the consent agenda. Right, any more discussion on the consent agenda? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All for the same sign. Okay. Next up then is previous business. We have a liquor license for Outer Belt Entertainment, LLC. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, uh, if you'll recall, at the last board meeting, we had um, two gentlemen from Outer Belt uh, here to represent the company, and they were asking for uh, permission for a uh, liquor license. Uh, Chief uh, Beal has the recommendation. I'm going to let him go over it and kind of go through the timeline with you. Mr. Mayor, Board of Aldermen, uh, the purpose uh, that we're in here today is for me to inform you of my recommendations on the issuance of the liquor license to the prospective new owners of Whiskey Tango, who's operating under the business name of Outer Belt Entertainment. Below, I produce some supporting factual evidence to justify my decision. On August the 2nd, 2017, I received a liquor license application, which is Exhibit F, from the city clerk for review and a signature. During my initial investigation, it revealed no negative criminal history on the owners and no negative history on their previous businesses. However, Exhibit F revealed the owners failed to provide required information for Article G, uh, which requested a date and time for violations uh, by any previous owners. Uh, they failed to put the, the date, the charge, and the final disposition that was at Ingredients Restaurant in Leewood, Kansas. I continued my investigation, and I spoke with Linda, Linda Grendel at Kansas City Regulated Industries. Ms. Grendel advised me of several problems with the licensee's establishment, and she emailed me on August 17, 2018, uh, six inspection notices, which is Exhibit A, that she had filed. Ms. Grendel expressed significant concerns for the licensees. These six inspections revealed violations where the business that was owned throwback and off key allowed employees to drink alcoholic beverages while working on duty. That was exhibit A, page one. And that violation occurred on May the 16th, 2014. A second violation on that day, no current license or permit on for the employees, which is Exhibit A, page one, occurred on May 16th, 2014. On June 28th, 2014, they was violated for serving larger than 16 ounces, more than 15% by volume, directly from a bottle. That was Exhibit A, page 4, and that occurred on 10-16-16. 
they also received a violation for failure to label their business sign correctly. On made it correction on June the 8th, 2017, the business was issued a violation for failure to cooperate with an investigation or inspection. That was the licensee and the employee that refused to cooperate with this investigation. I want to go back to the, the servant size. Um, that wasn't just an employee, but that was um, part owner of the business that that was over serving or allowed it, the over serving. And then back down to the 618 with a Licensee refused to cooperate with the investigation. That was our other owner here that failed to cooperate. During my conversations with Ms. Grindle, she spoke about the many disturbances at the business that made her feel unsafe when she conducted inspections. So Ms. Grindle said that they formed a special team of Kansas City police officers, fire personnel, and health inspectors so they can go in and do these inspections because the environment was hostile and because they feared for their safety and there was lack of cooperation with the owners and employees. She then went on to say that one time while she was on a disturbance call in the business, one of the officers observed two parties engaged in sexual activity in one of the VIP rooms. In regards to the Ingredients Restaurant in Leewood, Kansas, I contact Ms. Ms. Julie Berger, Leewood Police Department. She sent me a list of all the call logs uh, at the restaurant and a copy of a report where one of the uh, employees at that business served alcoholic beverage to a minor. They were charged and fined. I was contacted by uh, Captain Hernandez of KCPD, and he's the commander of the off-duty for the Westport area. Captain Hernandez expressed his issues of off-key and throwback Kansas City. He said the owners were uncooperative. There was consistent problems with the business inside and out, including shootings and assaults. He reported that the business is in the early stages of eviction which would eliminate the ongoing problem and free up additional resources for them. On August the 21st, I received a call from Mr. David Bays. He's the director of Westport Security. Mr. Bays stated there was consistent problems with the business. The licensee seldom accepts responsibility he had to increase his workforce of his officers because he feared for their safety and their significant concerns for Grain Valley with the business moving here. Based on the totality of my investigation, I would not recommend the approval of the liquor license applications for the new owners of Whiskey Tango's. I felt like they failed to relinquish important information on their application and to the Board of Aldermen, which resulted in the misrepresentation of the facts. Do you have any questions for Chief? Uh, I'll give a chance to the applicants to, to speak if they wish.
guys hire off-duty officers for your establishment, or are they part of like support security? We hire additional off-duty, three additional off-duty officers uh, for our establishments on our corners. Um, in the past years, Westport, 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 Westport,
outside. So, so the addition that happened in the past is they've had shootings this year uh, on the West Coast. Um, two years ago, they had something that happened from AC Hotel to Block Away that was shot towards Chugova in another direction. Um, and we're going to have no affiliation with us, but that used to be back when the uh, thing had a lot of people drive. We've never had anybody leave our place and shoot somebody, you know, we shoot into our place, anything like that. Okay. Uh, my next question is regarding these uh, these VIP rooms that they've mentioned. There's been a couple incidents that they have reported. Are you proposing VIP rooms at Whiskey Tango? No. Okay. So you won't have, like, bottle service rooms or anything like no. that? No, not at all. Those are, they're mentioned in the private karaoke rooms where you go in with a group of your friends, you have your own microphone system, um, so you can sing, start, start stop songs whenever you want to, so <coughs> completely different than what we're trying to do. What we're doing down there has nothing to do with what we plan on doing over here. We're not moving that business over here or anything like that. We want, we want to do a lot more concerts and kind of early, early night revenue. We're not trying to grow the post-130 business at all. Anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Well, that being said, why do you need the 3 o'clock license? What's that? That being said, why do you need the 3 o'clock license? We still think it, it, it has a significant chunk of revenue that's currently there. So if we were to, if we were to open, take over the place, and lose that chunk of revenue, we don't think we would be able to survive by the time we put it. It's going to be all the concerts up and running. Well, if you're spending a hundred grand to bring in a big name act, uh, act, we need to have as much earning opportunity to help pay and make sure we have enough security and everything else. There's a lot of expenses associated with that. We don't have any questions. Thank you. Uh, as this is a application for a liquor license, we do uh, open it up for anyone who is here that would like to speak for or against issuing the license. Do we have anyone here that would like to speak for or against the license? Seeing none, close that portion. Okay. Uh, if anyone has no additional questions for Chief or the applicants, I will entertain a motion. Could they bring the films that they were saying that shows they didn't do anything to where we could see it the next time? Would that be possible? Bring the what? The film showed it showing that they were not guilty. And of what, all these incidents? Yeah, right. I don't know if they have film that says they're not Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they would have. I mean, she's asking that I guess these incidents that the chief has brought up, if you would have any kind of film <laughs> from your establishment that would show a contrary to that. But most of it we didn't know about. It was never reported to us. What they're doing behind you're the scenes. Probably your, how, long, how long is your film stay? 20 days. Yeah, so they're not going to have. Well, I've got, I mean, I've got footage of uh, regular industry guys berating and insulting my guy. That would I've, got, be, I've got that footage if you want to see how that Would that be from the incident that they brought the team in or whatever? Yeah. So we've, we've, we've got that. The only other incident we'd have is from Saturday night where okay. we were closed. <clears throat> An incident where we closed and Westmore had an issue that was not us. I mean, we, we have that. But it would be <clears throat> nice to see how you handle things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for Chief, um, if we were to be using off duty officers, are we staffed for that? I've already expressed to them that we have no interest in, in performing off duty for them. Anyone have a motion?
Mm -hmm. And I move the uh, chief's recommendation to deny the liquor license. I got a motion from Alderman Headley to accept Chief Bill's recommendation to deny the license. Do I have a second on the license denial? Second, Alderman Bammon. Any discussion on denying the license? Okay. Seeing none, all, all in favor of denial, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. I'm not opposed. I'd just like to see some more information. I guess I'm just, I'm frozen out. Okay. So, five more deny. All right. Uh, next item, new business, Proposition D, fuel tax. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, uh, at the direction uh, of MML, you received uh, probably an email that suggested the Board of Aldermen pass a resolution of support for Proposition D. Um, as you all may know, Proposition D is a state referendum that's going to be on the upcoming ballot. That's going to provide a uh, additional uh, funding for transportation, law enforcement, um, bridges, uh, improvements across the state. I just wanted to let you know um, that uh, the early estimates that they put out for Grain Valley is that it'll be approximately $202,000 in additional revenue to Grain Valley, uh, in addition to our existing motor fuel tax and uh, the uh, the. I'm sorry, the county will uh, receive additional revenues in addition to the state. So uh, MML, the Missouri Municipal Leagues, has decided to endorse this initiative. They asked Grain Valley, uh, if we would, they asked all the cities if they would pass a, a resolution of support. Um, I had questions about whether it was possible. Of course, we want to be a good partner when we can, but I uh, reached out to Mr. Gary and Mr. Cook um, and the three of us after discussion uh, determined that it would not be appropriate for the board to support any sort of tax referendum via resolution. Uh, although we can privately and uh, each one of you can endorse it on your own, uh, it is not the position of the city of Green Valley to endorse or go against uh, other taxing authorities. With that. Yeah. Anyone have any questions on that? <coughs> All right. See no presentations. Move on to public hearing for 2018 tax levy. Mr. Mayor, members of the board, um, as we had discussed in the previous uh, workshop that we held, we have a uh, proposed levy decrease this year. Give me just a second. It wouldn't be that quick, Mayor. We have a proposed levy decrease by looking at the numbers of total and cents. And I just want to recap what the board real quick. What that looks like and what that means. Decrease. When we do that to the levy, we 
leave the general fund, park fund, and public health fund levies where they're at. Uh, it turns out to be uh, a, a revenue neutral um, uh, levy. So we're not going to see an increase overall to the, uh, the city's budget. <coughs> Therefore, taxpayers aren't going to see an overall increase from the city to their, to their levy and their property, uh, personal property and their uh, automobile, automobile. Sorry, residential tax. I don't have time. So with that, we are recommending that we leave the general fund levy at. 0.5454 cents. What? General levy. I'm going line by line. Right, but that should be 5554. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, Park levy point one two two six health point zero four eight nine debt service point nine zero two five for a total of one point six two nine four for the total levy. So happy to entertain any questions from the board. Uh yeah one. Uh when I had Post this, put this out. I had a question regarding should we be lowering, and there's been a lot of complaints about our roads, mostly because 75% of them were built in the same time period, so they all 75% failed in the same time period. But the question was why are we lowering taxes and not putting that money towards roads? And I know there's issues with moving money from fund to fund and what the max can be in funds before we have to go to voters and all that. So yes. yeah. what I mean what is, I mean you have to you'd be moving a portion of the ten cents to general fund, which what is what can what could you even put in general fund without asking for a tax? The maximum for the general fund is uh based off of what Kathy just told me it would be one and a half cents basically. So that so basically the most that we could yeah. The to move towards roads would be a cent and a half. Correct. Yeah, that would go in the general fund. Which would be what? Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand dollars. Just under thirty thousand a year. Total. I just told them that I would let the board know that they were concerned with that. So, but it looks like the motion would be used to thirty thousand dollars more towards roads if we did that. So, yeah. Anyone else have any questions? Okay. Uh, as this is a public hearing, uh, we open it up for anyone who would like to speak for or against the proposed uh, 10 cent decrease. Anyone in attendance who would like to speak for or against? 10 cent decrease or one tenth of a percent? Uh, I'll close the public hearing. Seeing the no additional public hearings, move on to ordinances. So B18-13, which will become ordinance 22 or 2440, um, from the second rated ordinance amending chapter 220 fireworks, section 220.030, section 220.060, and section 220.090, code of ordinances for the city of Grand Island, Missouri. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept bill number 18-13 for its second reading, making it ordinance number 2440. I have a motion on Ms. Chat to approve bill B18-13 for its second reading, making ordinance 2440. Do I have a second? Second on the west. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, um, this will We've seen this several times, had quite a bit of discussion about it. It's just the second read that will allow uh, patients to shoot off fireworks from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. on the first Saturday of July, as well as the third and fourth of July, unless the, the Saturday falls on the third or fourth, in which uh, the second of July will be allowed to shoot off fireworks. Seeing none, not fair to say aye. Aye. All for the same sign. Alderman Bayman. Alderman West. Yes. Alderman Headley. Yes. 
Alderman Coleman? Yes. Alderman Totten? Yes. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Six zero, Mayor. This is going to be 18-14. Um, we're at second read, which will be Ordinance 2241, an ordinance changing the zoning for certain land in Grand Valley from R1 single family to C3 highway commercial. Mayor, I move we accept Bill 18-14 for its first or for its second reading, making it Ordinance 2441. I have a motion, Alderman Haley, to accept Bill B18-14 for its second reading, making it Ordinance 2441. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Bannon. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, this is the second read of the zoning change. Um, as we heard earlier from the gentleman that came up to speak to the board, uh, the intended use by the, um, by the owner of the property is for uh, mini storage. I will tell you the action that you're taking tonight uh, is a zoning action. Uh, mini storage unit is not permitted anywhere in the city except within a C3 or an M1 industrial designation. Uh, the property down there along Eagles Parkway falls into the future land use designation of C3, which I would imagine that's probably why planning and zoning um, went through, approved it, and, and as well as the board. The action of uh, doing any additional mini storage units, um, that's not happening here. That's not allowed uh, for the owner unless he's able to get a conditional use permit for that, which would go through the same uh, procedure as a zoning change would. So. Just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that you're not voting to allow mini storage down there. You're only voting to change from the residential designation to C3. Uh, I just wanted to share that I had communication from me, John and Evelyn Beck regarding this. They email me. They live at 124 Southwest Eagles Parkway, and they just wanted to advise us that they did not oppose the zoning change. They were in favor of the zoning change. So, let me share that. <clears throat> the, the CIP comes back through us to make that decision. CIP, yeah. conditional use permit will, uh, it goes through zoning and then comes to the Board of Alderman. Now, additional questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Alderman Bayman? Yes. Alderman West? Yes. Alderman Headley? Yes. Alderman Coleman? Yes. Alderman Totten? Yes. Alderman Strachan? Yes. Mr. Mayor. Okay. Next up is resolution. This is resolution R18-37, <coughs> resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Green Valley, Missouri, authorizing the City Administrator to enter into a marketing agreement with Utility Services Partners Private Label Inc. For a service line warranty program. I move that we accept resolution number R18 37 as read. Okay. I have a motion, Mr. Alderman Bannon, to accept resolution R18 37. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second, Alderman Headley. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, as you recall, we had a representative from the National League of Cities uh, here to talk about the water line warranty program. Um, this is not the city offering the program. It's merely uh, an endorsement of types to offer to our residents that uh, a program that has been nationally uh, vetted, that's been vetted through state municipal programs and now city. Uh, the city also supports and has vetted it. With that, you would be uh, entering into an agreement that, that has no terms on the city. We can cancel the agreement at any time but it would give our residents uh, the peace of mind to be able to know that the city has reviewed this, this isn't a scam, and when, when this company reaches out to contact them about the, the program, uh, we can, um, they can come to the city to confirm that, that it is what it is. How much is this going to cost the people? They set their own prices. I think he said uh, they can get water line coverage. For, do you remember, Ken? I think one of them was six and one of them was nine. Yeah, per month. So, and it's completely voluntary. Does that interfere with people's insurance? Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's an additional, almost like an additional rider. Um, homeowner's insurance uh, usually stops at the houses, so if there's sewer backup, 
uh, the homeowners aren't covered for that ladder out in the yard, or a lot of times for the back up into the house, depending on the riders that they have, but it will not interfere with any insurance lines that, that we're aware of. Is something that we have to get um, multiple bids on? No, it's, we would treat it as a sole source because there's no other company out there that has National League of Cities and the Municipal Missouri League uh, that have endorsed the program. It's really, if you think about it, it's really just a collaboration of the local contractors because they hire all of their contractors locally to become part of the service warranty line program. Local contractors have to meet the standards they administer the program, they pay the contractors, so it's uh, more of a safer way to keep people from getting uh, ripped well, off is, by fly by night. What is the uh, responsibility of public works to what part to what part? We usually stop at the tap. Well, I'll let Rick answer that. The sewer tap, sorry. Yeah, our uh, responsibility stops at the actual main. So any of the actual sewer laterals, sewer laterals, for example, that go to the house, to the main, um, that is the homeowner's responsibility. Uh, when it comes to the water line, we maintain up to the meter, uh, from the meter to the house is the homeowner's responsibility. So really what this covers is that expense if that water line from the house to the meter fails or that sewer lateral from the house to the main fails. Uh, it's really the sewer lateral that's the real expensive part. It's typically six to eight feet deep, um, it, and in some cases it can go under a roadway or you know under sidewalks, that type of thing. So um, that's kind of the gap of where your homeowner's insurance stops at the house, and then you have the front yard basically, mm -hmm. and then you have city maintenance. So there is kind of that gap there, and that's basically what this covers. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, no one say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, same sign. Mr. Chair, Mayor. It's resolution R18-38, a resolution by the Board of Aldermen of the City of Grand Valley, authorizing the installation of two street lights along Billingham Road. I move that we accept bill number B, or R18-38 for its first reading and bring it back for its second reading no, no second by reading. title only. No second reading. Just as read. Outright? It's a resolution, not an ordinance. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. I move we accept the resolution number R18-38. All right. I have a motion from Alderman Cotton. It says resolution R18-38. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second Alderman Coleman. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, members of the board, these are two street lights that were actually requested by Parks and Rec to light up the new, uh, newly constructed trail along Dillingham. Uh, they would be uh, installed uh, adjacent to that area. Mr. Arroyo can answer any questions if you have them. Any questions? Well, if you the new lights or the ones that no one's are doing on the new ones, aren't they? Well, these are these are going to basically be a like a cobra head mast off the two existing poles. So there's actually two existing power poles that are along that stretch, and so these are actually just going to be hung off of those. Will they use the new LEDs? Is that what you're talking about? The LEDs yeah. or non-LEDs? What you're talking about? Yes. Will they only shine straight through? We will request a higher wattage, and I can't remember what that wattage is, but. Um, I don't have the actual plume distance, but I know there's two different wattage styles. There's one that kind of goes down, and then there's the other one that goes out a little bit more. But they are intended to be the LED. I'm not sure. I, I think you'd have to request it special now if you wanted something different. Can we request the new street Yeah, and they do cost more, too, if it's something different now. All right. And this one's Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Take care, Mayor. Next up, City Attorney Support. Mayor Report. Next up, City Administrator and Staff Support. Start with Mr. Arroyo. I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update on the uh, 
um, left turn lane at the school there by Kirby. We did, uh, we were in touch with the school and, and it looks like we needed to increase the time on that. So we did increase the time on that. I think we did that Friday, last Friday. And so it should be like 19 seconds now instead of the eight, seven or eight seconds that we had before. So I think we'll... Why not 20? Uh, you, you know, there's kind of a formula. And I think the goal was to try to get at least four buses through. And so that was, that was the number we had. So hopefully that'll work out a little bit better and we can still adjust it. So it's just work in progress. That's all I had. Thank you. This, does this ever ultimately evolve into the need of a turning lane there? I mean, are we, are we just kind of band-aiding an issue? Or? Uh, they we're band-aiding it as population of high school increases. I mean, do they have to do traffic studies every time? They're, yeah, they're, they add on. Warrant process. Well, we do have, <coughs> we, we did a, a traffic study, the school did a traffic study um, when they got to a certain point. Actually, we're probably, uh, we're not quite there yet with the new expansion. Um, ultimately, I think the goal is whenever we get to a point where we widen Eagles Parkway that that would be part of that. Um, there's just some constraints there just with uh, the culvert crossing and everything in that intersection that uh, makes it very, it's not really cost effective to just try to do that one little section. And so um, really the traffic warrants really need to show that it needs to be there. and. There are issues, obviously, at certain times of the day, um, certain events that occur, um, but ultimately when you start looking at the studies, um, it's only on those specific days or times, so it doesn't didn't quite actually meet when they started doing the expansions to actually add that turn lane yet. So, But it, isn't, it is something that we're actively looking at as we move in the future. Nothing further from staff, Mayor. <coughs> Next up, Board of Alderman reports and comments. Alderman Stratton. Nothing to report. Alderman Totten. Well, I'll just make it noted that I'm still complaining about the uh, pedestrian lights down on Main Street because nobody, I think the police should be out there passing out tickets when they don't have anything to do, but I know that's not very often. But the people are running through there, and there are people standing trying to get across, and they're not doing it. I believe it. we have our footnotes in the budget, correct? How long is it going to take to get it going? It'll be after January 1st. Okay. We could make January it probably as. <laughs> well, we can probably order them January 2nd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since we'll be closed January 1st, we'll have to order them January 2nd. Well, I'm going to try to get. Um, the small Baptist church to see if they will mind people parking because they don't have services except Wednesday and Sunday and they're not open on Sunday to discourage them happening to go across so the which street. Which way are they, where are they headed? To so the, they're generally going to the, uh, the, you know, the, the pottery, place? pottery place. So they're parking across from them. Some of them are across the street because... We're encouraging them to park at the... Well, Post some office. of the time, well, yeah, I could do that, too. But then you know, I cross Walnut. I'll, I'll see what we can so do. How does that work? I mean, I know when we have the flashing lights, the police can really ride a ticket or do something, but, I mean, can we still really ride a ticket for not yielding to a pedestrian in a crosswalk? It is a marked crosswalk. I mean, we can, yeah. we can, but that's a, I mean, that's a busy. Yeah. Area. I mean, we technically can. We either do once there's actual signal up there probably. Yeah. I appreciate that. Alvin Coleman. Alvin Heavy. Thanks to whoever got the phone calls done for the big hole in the road up off across from Price Chopper. It's appreciated. For now, until it so appears again. <laughs> that magical <laughs> hole. <laughs> what did they do? I mean, did they... <coughs> Do anything different this time? <laughs> yeah, they did the patch last time. So. I, I noticed the other day people weren't like swerving to dodge it. <laughs> it must be fixed. <laughs> Alright. Almer West. Nothing at this time, man.
Auburn and Bammon. Nothing to report tonight. Okay. Uh, next up, marriage report. Oh, he's got all kinds of stuff to tonight. Okay. Multiple things to vote on, too. Okay, number one, as I hope you are all aware, we have a fair coming up in less than two weeks. If you're not, then we have not done our job at all. Uh, so with that, uh, we do uh, you know, big fireworks display on Saturday night of the fair at approximately 9.30. Uh, this year, we decided logistically and to the fact that they can shoot larger shells off to move it to the city-owned football field off of Old 40. Since it is city property, we need a motion and a vote to allow that fireworks display to occur down there. There's a commercial company license and all that, and they've bought maps and all that stuff, so they've done all their due diligence. So I'm fast and stood behind whiskey tanks and a little more limited on what they could shoot due to the fallout releases and all that. So we decided to move it down there. And we also don't have to have the police up there as long, make sure someone doesn't stumble out the back of whiskey tank going on to the fire shooting ground. So it'll be a little easier to keep people out from down out down there. So uh, I will entertain a motion to allow that display to occur. Second. Second. Second on Headley. Any discussion or questions in on that display? 9.30 Saturday, look that direction. Not this Saturday, but the 8th. Okay. Uh -huh. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All for the same sign. With that, I'm sure you've all gotten in for, uh, emails about the float. We're going to participate in the city float and, and all that. Uh, if you want to come down and help the fair, we're more than glad to help you. We have a ton of events, and as of this morning, 116 vendor spots, I think, which three years ago we had 52. So we filled that place up. I, we now have the largest fireworks tents they make to put vendors in, and there's no more space in that thing to put vendors in, so everyone has to go outside at this point. So I'll let you know about that. The next item we have then is, and I wanted to do this, it might seem early, but I want to get the word out there. Christmas, Christmas falls on a Tuesday. With that, Christmas Eve falls on a Monday. That being said, we were thinking, or I guess I was thinking, I won't blame anybody else, uh, Wondering, because you know, typically like on Christmas Eve, we'll close down early and all that. Do we just give the employees Christmas Eve off and post and just start posting the office is going to be closed that day? Because what will happen is a ton of people will take vacation and stuff, and we'll have a, a few people here that were on the bottom of the totem pole, so they didn't get to take it off. <laughs> you know, this is what will happen. So, and I don't know what kind of business we would be generating here on Christmas Eve anyways. So I was going to entertain a motion to close City Hall on Christmas Eve, and that way we can go ahead and get it posted on the calendar where there's no one saying they didn't know it, it was going to happen that way. Go next to motion. Yeah, that motion involved in Coleman, I have a second. Okay. Second, Alden Stratton. Any discussion in on that? What about New Year's Eve? I'm getting that in a second. That's, that's coming up. <laughs> all right. All in favor on Christmas Eve being closed in, say aye. 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 Also, the same sign. Okay. Now, that being said, New Year's Eve then falls on a Monday. I don't think we necessarily need to close all day on New Year's Eve. Typically, what we've done in the past is we've closed down a few hours early. That way, everybody can get out of here and get to their New Year's Eve plan. I would just, personally, I think, go with that again, whatever closing time we wanted to, but I think we could stay open New Year's Eve, but this closed earlier than the regular 5 o'clock. I don't know, we you need a motion for that, whether to do that by motion, Brian? We can, yeah. Okay. So I'll entertain some closing times on New Year's Eve. Noon. 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 Noon.
entertain the, entertain the most of them. Most of Alderman, Alderman Coleman then closed. Second. Second Alderman West. Any discussion? No. All right. Say none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay, next then, Groundhog's Day. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to check my notes, make sure that all I have to do. That's a long note. All right, uh, that is all I have. No more tickets. All right, we do not have a need for additional executive session, so unless someone has something else. All right, we'll adjourn.